All right, we're live. Okay, today we have Caitlin on, and uh, she is a coordinator in our marketing team for the center, a company that I founded. And um, I'm really excited to um, just talk about what a coordinator position does and why we kind of came up with the role of a coordinator for our company. And, and maybe you can get some tips from that on how to, if you want to implement a more of a coordinator role for your company or, um, or use a lot of the, the same tips for different positions you already have. So, um, Caitlin, do you want to give a little background on yourself and uh, how long have you been here at Center and, and all that? Yeah, I have been at the Center for about 16 months now. So, uh, that, but who's counting? It's just. You say 16? Has it been that long? It's been that long, yeah. Wow. So, yeah, I've uh, been here going around 16 months. Um, I started off as a virtual assistant, like most most of most of our team has done in different ways. Um, so I started as a virtual assistant and then moved into a coordinator role almost a year ago, and really have uh, enjoyed that and, and uh, thrived in this role as well. Um, but I'm from Kentucky. Well, I live in Kentucky. I'm from South Carolina. And my husband's from Kentucky, and I'm expecting our first child um, in August. So. Yay. <laughs> we'll have another uh, center baby. Yes. Yep, that's we'll right. have one about every six months. <laughs> it's been a recent trend. So, um, and you made a comment, which I actually love. I want to bring that up because every seems like every live I have, I put a little a little tidbit in on why virtual being virtual and being a virtual company is so cool and why um, I think it's so much simpler running a company virtually. And you had made a comment of like your virtual assistant, you were a virtual assistant that like worked into another position in the company and how that's how what happened with a lot of people. And, but that just shows the level of talent we were able to get as a virtual company, because the fact that we could grow people that were in more entry level positions all the way up into other, um, into more supervisor type positions is, is, is great. So um, I'm glad you brought that up. So before we dig in today, we're going to talk about how to coordinate a virtual team. Um, and before I dig in, I just have to say, like, look at my background. It's different than like every other live I've done for the last however long. And that is because I'm home. Uh, but so I've been at my mom's for the last two months in quarantine because my son was high risk. And and uh, it's just been so great to be home. Um, it uh, I, I have missed it. And I, I've been missing. My, I got my older kids back. They've been at their other parents as well. So they, they're home. And, and it's just been really cool to see everybody. Plus I can do my house projects again. Like I started doing some, my, sis, my daughter came home uh, yesterday and I told her she was going to get her own room. Finally, she's been begging me for like five years. And, and so we were going to redo her room. And so she didn't stop like literally from morning to evening. She's like, she's doing a room. And, and um, anyway, so I, uh, I, I realized how good that was for my brain to like, I've been working really hard. And so it was just good to, to get out and, and, and do a little bit like that. So, all right. So with that said, let's dig in. Um, so the coordinator role was something that was born in our company as, as kind of like as I started to design the organizational structure. I never really I always hated the traditional um, organizational structure. And I never wanted fully autonomous pods like there's some teams are like there aren't any supervisors. It's just autonomous pods. And and it's like we need some level of accountability or somebody to report to and things like that. Um, but I also wanted to create a level of, uh, I do love autonomous pods. Like I want autonomy where they can, there's a rhythm and they can work hard, but I also need some level of depth so that um, people can get the things done that they need to get done. And, and, um, and so I, I wanted to build something that was kind of the best of both worlds. And, uh, and so as I was designing these different teams, so we do a lot of different services. So we have different departments in marketing and, and technology and accounting and a bunch of those. And so, as I was designing it, I was like, what we need is really a str strategic minded person and a, and a how, and a how minded person to, um, to really get the vision of those different channels going. And, uh, and really me being a full blown visionary, I needed somebody to really take, take my ideas and my vision and like really run with it. And so, so I realized these different brains are important. And when you find people with these different skill sets, you can kind of figure out where they need to go. And, and when, you, when people are in the right seat, um, magic happens with that. So, so Caitlin, 
um, describe to us a little bit about what you think of what you, your role as a coordinator is and, and how you can help serve your team. Yeah, the coordinator is more of the how role. Um, it's right up my alley. I like uh, as as being the coordinator, you uh, plan the small details, you oversee your team. Um, when projects come in, you obviously you coordinate those and you delegate the tasks um, to your team um, based on their their skills and their expertise. And one thing about my coordinator role within the marketing department is I've got to learn and know each team member and their strengths and um, really get to work for them, give them projects and pieces of the project that will uh, exemplify some of their, their strengths. Um, but a lot more of the duty is um, being the gatekeeper for my team, making sure that if there's meetings that they don't necessarily need to be sitting in, I can sit in there and, and fill them in and just being the encourager, someone that can, take care of, of the small admin tasks, sending emails, collecting images, whatever it, my team needs. Um, as for me, my coordinator role is just being that floater as well as being the one that holds the structure together. Uh, when we, Because a lot of what we do are, is project-based and it might be different from the last one that we did. So just making sure that they have what they need to be successful. Yeah, I kind of equate, I actually thought about this as I was thinking about this live is I kind of equate the coordinator role to almost an executive assistant or like what my executive assistant role is for me. It's as if the coordinator is almost that executive assistant to the full team and from the standpoint of, I feel like they keep us accountable as visionaries. Like our executive assistants will be in our leadership meeting and like they don't put their video cams on. So they're kind of behind the scenes, you know, taking notes and every once in a while they'll like direct message us. Like when we're off track, if we're like doing a goal setting meeting and we're like, not staying true to what our meeting format should be and they like, keep us in line. We're like, oh yeah, sorry, we're gonna go in line. And so they know how to like, um, they know what the strengths and weaknesses of the team are. And so um, I've, I've seen so many posts out saying, oh, I hope this virtual thing doesn't stick because, oh, you can't supervise your team and this and that. And I and what would you say to those people, you know, that are, it, it feels as if they they think that micromanaging is the only way to really run a team. Like, how do you how do you handle that, and and what do you feel like is the best way to kind of coordinate and run a team? Yeah, so our team, um, and for a lot of virtual companies, and especially within the center, um, we have team members that are from the East Coast all the way to the the Pacific Coast. So they're in, we're dealing with different time zones and uh, different skill set. But as far as it's all about setting yourself up for success. And I think a lot of what we do within our marketing team and within the center can be translated to other industries and other companies as far as, you know, you said a point about putting the right brains and different brains in the right positions. And I think that's part of being virtual and setting your up, yourself up for success is having the right players in the right, in the right, right positions. And then, um, as far as our team and working for, for the center, we have a really great working environment as far as our team culture and our teams getting along. And so, um, we want to be successful. We want to complete our projects for our team and for our team members and for our company. And that's what drives the, the success is really your culture around, uh, your, your company. And that, that of course, it's that side of it. And then there's the administrative side of, you know, a project management, having, you know, a, a plan laid out. I love, I love to blueprint plan. You know, I've been in meetings with you, Mia, and you've got this great idea. And I'm like, hold on a second. Let's, let's lay it out. Let's put some steps in. And that's important too. You know, it's important to have that vision, but then to have that, that plan. So. And it's a good thing that we all have different brains because <laughs> I've made the mistake of hiring a bunch of visionaries before. And that is, not work just in case you're wondering <laughs> yeah I, and that's what it's you'll learn and then you've learned from working with different uh different brains and different uh, people is just you have to find what what works and there's a formula to success it may not look the same for every company but the ingredients are the same yeah, no, I love that. And I love that you mentioned a word um, that is dear to my heart, which is culture. And I just literally, I was, I ended up waking up last night. And this is where my visionary brain works. But I woke up at like four o'clock in the morning with these random thoughts. I was like fast asleep. I wake up and 
and it was around the concept of culture. I've been writing this book around um, like, what is it that, that creates that culture and that foundation for our company? And, and so I've been putting all those pieces together is so that, so a company can have a rock solid idea of what, what is the foundation of their culture? And then, um, and then what happens is the people that come on board, the team and everybody, they're coming in with their own, their own purpose and their own values and their own vision of what they want. And so when they see the companies, they can say, okay, now do I complement that? Do I, do I coordinate with like, do, can I align with that vision? Can I align with those things? And so when that, that person comes on, then together it's like the, the company can be stronger and a, 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 um, a stronger force than before. And that's when like rhythm happens. And that's when like the magic starts to happen, that synergy happens within a, in a company. And so that's why it's like, I always, as a visionary, I always naturally start at the top, right? And work my way down. But but it's been cool to go through this process of been going through it. It's like, yeah, you might figure out your way at the top and then get those how people and those what people to, to really go in and dig in and, and make it happen. So yeah. I love that. And I, I'll say one of the things that I really, and I'll remember this and I'll never forget it, I that aligned me so well with the center was when I interviewed with you, Mia, all that time ago, um, you had to, you said, I'll be right back. And one of your children came in and they asked you a question and I was like, I can totally get here because you were, you were real and you were vulnerable and you're like, hold on a second. My child needs something. I'll be back to this interview. And you're like, I'm sorry about that. And I'm like, don't be because that was real and that was authentic. And that was, and that's important that we have in our culture within our company is real things happen. <laughs> Kids are going to come in. Someone's going to knock at your door, but we don't let that stand in the way of us being productive and us <laughs> getting things done we just incorporate it. It is just what it is, you know? And so that's the thing I wanted to point out too. Yeah, no, that's cool. And the other thing too, is like every company has, that's why I go back to that vision too. Like when you have that clear viewpoint of what your values are, what you stand for. And, and then um, it makes, it kind of lowers the stress level on it. Everybody knows what to expect. People know what success means. And, and, uh, and it, and you kind of start to feel what that culture is. You know, for me, that was a big thing, like learning to relax about, you know, like obviously I want to keep professional. And if I want with a client, I'm a little more like, okay, kids stay here, you know, but even then if it happens, it happens. And I don't, I don't freak out or stress about it. And, and, um, and I've had a few lives where it's happened. <laughs> so my husband actually today, he's like, you're going to do a live with all the kids home and everyone's around. I said, yeah. <laughs> like, Cause he's like, you don't have any blocks on your doors yet. Like uh, my, uh, my office doors and the, they'll, they'll go right through it to the bathroom. And it's like, well, it is what it is. So that's, um, that's life. So, all right. No, this is great. Um, so, Oh, I have to just make this. So this is, this is a, a true coordinator for you because this is probably the only live I've not, haven't written any notes for. And it's not like the other lives I spent tons of time preparing, but I always try to come up with some outline and, and notes for you guys. And, and uh, this one, like uh, Caitlin sent me the outline. It was like all buttoned up, even what I was supposed to say. I'm like, all right, we're good. <laughs> they were ideas. Just putting it there. It's like a true coordinator meeting because like I have no notes. So if I'm looking at her notes right now. So there you go. All right. So um, you made one thing. I think you kind of talked about a little bit about, about visionaries and coordinators and the working relationship between both of those. Is there anything you kind of want to add to that and, and the importance of that? Well, um, so in our in our setup, in our structure within the center, I'm a coordinator and then I work hand in hand with the marketing strategist. And our marketing strategist, you had him on a few weeks ago, Clayton, he's fantastic. He's also a visionary and I've been in meetings with you and him and you both just feed off each other. And, and that's how Clayton is, he brings that energy and we just we've gotten to where we are in this thing to where we have to weigh each other out. He's so excited. He has these great visions. I'm like, I'm gonna get you there, but we have to backtrack. You gotta tell me. We gotta lay this blueprint out. And we gotta plan to get us there. I'm with you there. Let's get there, but let's make sure we do it in a timely manner. That we do it um, with a structure and we do it with a goal in mind. And so, you know, just being able to work with uh, a visionary you just you have to sometimes just pull them back listen but stay excited don't don't take their excitement from them let them run with the idea but bring them back to with the plans that you need so just listening listening supporting and just being able to 
to catch up with them, you know? Yeah, no, that's good. And I think for the visionaries that are watching this, you know, be willing to humble yourself. And there's so many visionaries that just want to still control it all or do all the things. And it's like the sooner you relinquish a level of control and realize that together you can be, you can accomplish and get it done. Like I realize now, like being paired with how minded people, like that is because I'm such a why minded, a visionary type minded, like when you, when you pair yourself with the how minded people, it, um, it really makes things happen so much better. You know, in the early days of my company when we were small and I couldn't have this level of depth, it, uh, you know, you're forced to be fill all those positions and, and I, I did it okay, you know, and I and actually did it probably pretty well, but now that I'm, I mean, I did have an accounting degree, I did accounting work, so I had to be able to get in the details enough, right? Um, but it's interesting now that I'm like pulled out of the weeds and how like your brain like <laughs> slowly starts to struggle with the details even more. And so you you rely become even more reliant on how people and which is good. It's good to be in your in your area of, of genius and that you can really um, thrive because in it, when everybody's in those spots and that's how like the company really flourishes. So yeah, awesome. Okay, so what do you do to organize? Um, you're in a meeting. Uh, what is what is your going through your mind when you hear us visionaries and then the team synergizing and strategizing together and and you know it's all on you to bring all those details together. Like what's going through your mind? I'm usually, usually during those times, I'm, I'm taking notes as quickly as I can write them. I'm abbreviating just to keep up um, writing the questions that come to mind down that they, that, that I think of that immediately pop into my mind that I know may have not popped up into uh, the visionary or another, another uh, personality in the, in the planning group. Uh, but taking the notes, we we tend to really try to record all of our meetings so we have that reference point. Um, but my big thing is just listening, writing it out, and even even if it's after that meeting or in that meeting, filling in the details, saying, okay, here's point A and here's point B. What do we have to do to get there? Um, so that's where the notes and the recording, and I call them blueprints because that's how you look at it because with the blueprint you can erase things and you can move walls and you can move um, your goals and everything around. Um, and some people like spreadsheets me. I know that you're a spreadsheet person. You like that. Some people like Google docs, but however you take your notes and however you create it, be able to be willing to redesign it and reformat it and to start from scratch. We've had projects where we're going one direction and then we meet as a team and it's like, okay, nope. Let's start over. Let's just start a whole new page. Um, and then with the organization comes listening. And I think that's important with any role within any company is listening to what the goal is, defining that goal, listening to your teammates, listening to um, your leadership, and just making sure that all of that is something that you can achieve, that you can organize, and you can get behind and motivate. That's good. So what do you think as um, if you look at the marketing team, those that are listening, like I look at the what the marketing team has been able to produce now versus just three months ago. I mean, no, no more people like I mean, you have, you've added one person since then. But overall, like the depth of people hasn't changed, but your output of stuff has changed dramatically. Like, what do you feel like? I know there's probably just not one thing that's happened, but what do you feel like are some of the things that has allowed the marketing team to develop more synergy and output and, and things like that? Definitely having a process in place, a project management process in place, defining our roles, identifying our strengths has definitely been a big thing. Um, knowing that there are some in my team who can pump out content as soon as you say it, they're like, oh, we can get it. And then some of the team members aren't there. And then we have some that can just take an image and create a masterpiece. And you're like, okay, I don't know how you did it, but that's your strength and encouraging that and giving them projects suited to that. And I think I'll go back to our process is, um, you know, when we get a new project that comes in, we go ahead and we break it down. We'll hop in a meeting. Um, we're not afraid to just hop into a, a quick zoom call, you know, let's, let's discuss it. Let's break it down. That's been a game changer. But I think our, I would say our biggest game changer has been having retrospectives at the end of a project or the end of 
um, we do like uh, we use we, we use Scrum in our in a project management within our, our department. And then at the end of our sprint, which is a part of the Scrum, we'll have a retrospective and we talk about what went right, where we can improve, what didn't go right and what our next actions are. And I really think that has been our game changer because it allows for us to be open and vulnerable and we're totally okay with it being, um, you know, taking responsibility for something that I felt on as a coordinator. Just, just this last week, I had to tell my team, I failed you on this project. I am so sorry and I caused this to happen, but this is what I'm gonna do next time. And it wasn't like a pity party. It wasn't to point fingers. It was just a time for us to be honest and them to weigh in and say, okay, this is where we can improve. And so I highly recommend just having a retrospective and just being able to identify your shortcomings, where your growth is, celebrate your wins. When you do something, celebrate it, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, take time to, to actually, like, yeah, this is great. Um, I mean, obviously you pick up and you keep going, but you realize, like, I don't know, I, I so often we're, we're just, if you're a driven person, you're like, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? And you don't know, take time to just enjoy those moments. And I think anything in life you should do like those retrospectives on and as you're, um, it's always good to assess, like, how could I have been better and what could I have changed? So your team, a couple people, so I see Clayton, on uh, Facebook here. So what is swarming? There's this word out there that's on uh, the, the chat. So for those that don't know, what is what is the word swarming? If they, they're reading the comments and they see that, what does the word swarming mean? So that is where um, when we have something come in or we're working on a project or a roadblock, we just get together and we talk it out and, and we swarm and we and we, we divvy out tasks. If, if I've hit a roadblock and I'm like, guys, I can't go this my team will step in and say, well, I'm going to do this part and I'm going to do that part. It's like a, a swarm of bees. We're going to get the honey. We're going to get it. We might just have to, you know, divvy it out or discuss it. And it's just, it's just working together through the smallest or the largest thing is coming together and having that, that synergy and hyping each other up and building up, you know, us coming, me coming into this live today, they're like, oh, we're so excited. And, you know, just hyping up even the smallest things is so important with especially being virtual. Yeah, no, I love that. It's interesting that you guys use the bee analogy because uh, Cameron on our team, he's been using this uh, bird uh, when they're in sync. What it, I was trying to think of the word, um, but you know when you have a mass flock of birds and they're they're all together and they're in sync and they're going around and, and sometimes they go in circles, right? You're like, okay, that was great. But like they're in sync and they're going towards a destination and so it's not always a straight path. But if you think about the migration patterns or things like that, they are they are going to a destination, um, and and I think it's so cool to think of that thinking in business in that terms versus like it, I'm a lone person on a pathway and it's all up to me. Like if you think of it as whether it's a bee formation or a bird formation, I think I love that analogy so much better because it's like it really is. You know, maybe the visionary is that point person, right? And they got that that V of that bird, and like, the, but you're all together. It's not one. It's not um, one's more important than the other. It's all of us in sync, and that's the beauty of it, right? It's not just the, the bird in the front that's great. It's like no, it's the beautiful. It's the beauty of all of it together. And you could use a band analogy. So we can keep going with great analogies. So I have to just say another quick tangent. So I am the I I'm getting better. I was the worst with analogies until Cameron came on. And he would like come up with these like analogies like on the fly. I'm like, where do you come up with these stories? So I've been really working hard on my analogies. So hopefully if you love that, like comment. So that was a great analogy. <laughs> I, I'll say that as 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 our team and I think that I should go with any department, any company is everything we do whether one person worked on it, it's a team effort. You know, I couldn't have done this had my team not done these items and recognizing that it is a team effort and building that, that repertoire with your team. And um, I keep calling them the t my team because we are, we are a team. And when I went into the marketing department, my, my background is vaguely in marketing, not, a t not hugely wide, but you know, more of a niche marketing and, I guess, and we all are the marketers. I'm just here to coordinate. And my team was like, nope, you're in the marketing department. You're going to market too. And we're going to do it. And just having that encouragement and that, that swarming together has, it, is another, I think, attribute to why we've been so successful uh, with some of the shifts that we've had.
Yeah, no, that's great. Okay, so I'm going to read this part of your notes because I it really, um, I think this is something that um, it's hard to find. I mean, you have to realize that there's different minds and people learn and process information differently. And people only don't know the big picture like you know. So it says, when delegating tasks or following up on a piece of a project, you're speaking to a person who usually has devoted their time to your one piece of that project. Be thoughtful for your approach. So with that, um, it is, it's something you forget. You, you're like, why didn't they figure this out? Why did they do it so wrong? And you're like, you, they, you forget that they don't see everything that you see. So how do you navigate that? It go, it, I think for us is, or for me, it's putting the confidence in that person's ability, knowing that uh, there's a whole project, they have one piece of it. There's a reason we delegated that piece to them. And if they have a roadblock or they have a question, then either I didn't explain it well, it's not been explained well. Um, but demonstrating that confidence and listening to them. Um, and then a really great thing that I think has been a shift within our company is really that enablement of for us to come up with ideas and to encourage you, encourage us to uh, think on behalf of our departments and uh, of the company, come up with ideas. And that's one thing I think that when you're working with someone who only knows this little piece of the puzzle for the whole project, encourage them enable them, build them up, let them know their voice is heard. And, you know, if they need to know the whole project, sit down, tell them the whole idea, start from the, from the very beginning, all the way through how it should be. And just having that open line of communication is key. Um, especially when you're virtual, because it's not like you're all in this one meeting and you can just pop out their cubicle and check on them. This is just being, uh, it's that human interaction is what we need. And that's a key thing to coordinating is making sure that you don't lose that. And so when you have that one team member working on that one piece of it, just having that vulnerability with them and being um, their encourager and their advocate and their someone to bounce off ideas. And that, I feel like my team does that with me and I do that with them. And so it's just having that, that extra touch of human interaction to it. Yeah. And uh, on that note, um, one of the things I always talk about, like when you're virtual, you really have productivity and you have communication. Like those are the things you go off of. And so with that, communication is such a big piece. So how would you, um, what do you have to say around the communication aspect of, of coordinating teams or expand yeah. on what you've already said? I know you've already. <laughs> communicate, 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 over communicate, you know, um, one thing we I've learned working within the company virtually with such, you know, we're, we're a larger virtual, completely virtual company is everyone has a different voice from talking to them in a video and typing. Uh, and I've noticed that about myself. I'm a, I'm a capser. I'll, if I'm on all caps, I may not go back to the sentence and change it. It's going to be all caps. I'm not yelling. I'm just, I got too much to thinking about. I'm going to put it on paper. And so um, with the communication is learning your team and learning their voice and your company's voice and knowing um, they said things that way. And there's so many different assessments you can take. Um, the one that we use is a five voice assessment. And so we know our voices within our team. Um, and so when it comes to that communicating, I know that I can tend to see if someone's frustrated from the way that they communicate or if, if I feel that way, I'm like, Hey, let's just hop in a meeting. Like, let's just, let's just have an open door policy. Um, I think some companies are like scared to like turn on their video camera. They're scared to say, let's jump on a video call or, you know, they just want to only stay in chat mode. And I think it's so important to be, it's just a click of a button to get into a virtual meeting like this. And it's uh, I think being making that part of the culture from day one, especially if you're obviously for virtual is so important. And, uh, and like you said, communicating and, um, and I think, you know, set, figure out what your, um, oh, what was I going to mention? Like, as far as uh, your etiquette, like your communication etiquette, I think that's important because like people are going to come to the table, uh, with certain things, but like people, you want to get to know your team, but I also think you, there's a certain level of, it's a kind of a, I'd say a balance between getting to know your team, but also having a level of etiquette standards that, are easy things that everybody can kind of 
get on board with that um, here's how we you communicate in general. It doesn't mean that you don't create your personality and your flair within those realm of standards, but it, uh, I find that those help when you're virtual. Yeah, um, it, yeah sure. I, I agree. And, and setting the standard and setting that um, <laughs> we've, and the we value your time to be productive. So if you don't want to hop in a meeting, it's okay. The door's there, the author's there, but it's just it's a balance, and you learn it for your for yourself and for your coworkers. And I, I guarantee, if you lined you know our marketing department next to our technology department, they don't look the same. Except there's that open door policy. Yeah, no, that cool. All right, so what are some of the I know as far as tools that people can use to help coordinate their teams. Um, we've used a lot of the bigger we get, we have to get a little more proprietary and a few more things developed and things like that. But for smaller companies or people that are, can use Zapier in different ways to connect different things, like what are some tools that, that, um, that uh, we've used in the past or, or things that are great for other companies? Yeah, I, we, I've, we've grown a lot since I've started, but you know, we started with just having like a, a Google doc and we still do that a lot with our productivity. It's just a Google doc because it's in live time and we can comment and we can see changes. And so as much as using the Google doc, a, a Google spreadsheet all the way to software management programs like monday.com. Um, that was a big deal while we were kind of in the transition of, of going to the product or the software that we're at now. Monday.com was it helps with uh, the organization and, and assigning tasks and that's basically what we have now with the the project management system that we have um, it's in our project it it helps us um, lay out all of the tasks and see who's assigned to them and helps with billing and tracking time but it's individual to your company and what your needs are there literally are dozens and dozens of product uh, productivity tools that are available. Um, for project management and agile management. And that is something you, I would encourage anybody that's virtual or thinking about going virtual, do some research, do some demos, watch YouTube videos, find what works for your team. And don't be afraid to switch as your team grows or as your, your dynamic shifts. Um, we've, we've been in a couple project management systems, like I said, since I've been here, but it's just because we've outgrown it or we needed a new aspect and we've not been afraid to jump into the new software with two feet. Yeah, I know. That's great. Um, Clayton mentions like Slack, you know, obviously that's a great way yeah. to communicate um, zoom meetings, things like that. Obviously you need instant messenger and video communication and then project management. I would say like, those are obviously the key and don't be halted by, Oh, I don't know how to use it. I mean, like you said, you could use a Google doc if you need to and line it all out in there. And like Google docs are great because you can, add comments and suggestions and and you can line out a full document with the full team before you know it. And man, I go back, I don't know if I could have, well, I mean, I started this business back in 2006, but looking at my tools I had available then to what I have now, it's like, I, I just love technology. So I get so excited when you can be in a live document. Like I just remember trying to do document management in the early days. And it was like, it was so hard, like, okay, this person had to check out this document and then did they upload it back into the cloud? And then, yeah. you know, it's just, it was just messy where it looks so when I see how simple Google docs is to just collaborate and edit and suggest and all those things that it's go by a Google account and you can get all that <laughs> free with it. So there's nothing stopping you from, from coordinating and, and um, getting teams together. So if anything, use that, use an instant messenger, use video calls. Yeah. So. And that's what I'll, a Slack, uh, one last thing. <laughs> We, we use Slack. We've been using Slack a lot the whole time. I don't know how long the company's been using it for, for a long time. But just even yesterday, I went into our marketing Slack channel and I reorganized it because we had grown and we had added new clients, new channels for them. So I went and I reorganized it and I was very open with the team. This makes sense to me in my brain. If it doesn't make sense to y'all, it's cool. I made note. I'll rename everything again and we'll start a different way. But, you know, we've been in our, in our, in the, in our, uh, in our department with our team members now for a couple of months. And it just occurred to me yesterday, you know, it might be more productive if we redo the Slack. So just being that flexible as your team grows, yeah. even on the smallest details. Yeah, no, I love that. Well, this was great. Like I, um, I just love getting into these lives because you don't, you come in with just, you know, a few, a few random thoughts and then it's just cool to see synergy and, and ideas flowing and, so hopefully those watching got um, some great ideas and, and uh, hopefully some tools or some tips to 
either improve the team they have or be inspired to um, start a team or um so do you have any last minute thoughts for um anybody that uh about coordinating teams or if they want to implement a coordinator position in their company no i think like we said a lot just watching this but i you know um my big thing was, as far as coordinating, I guess this is my final thought, is always have that flexibility and be able to listen to the needs of your company, of your team, and be fine with being the gatekeeper. Protect your team so that they can be productive and you can take it and, and help. And that's what I took. I'm the gatekeeper. I want to be that. I want to be the admin for my team. I want to be doing the little tasks so that they can be doing the tasks that they're experts in. Awesome. Well, good. Thank you, Caitlin. Um, if you liked what you saw, please comment, engage. Um, I would love to just keep this dialogue going. We, I do keep checking the comments um, that you guys post. And and uh, if there's something that I had, it, just because you're watching the recording, if you're like, oh, you know, she asked that only during the live, like I still go back to the comments after the fact. So um, keep commenting and engaging on these. It's uh, it, lets me know you're out there and lets me know that you're, you're liking what you, you see. So don't feel like you only can comment when these are live. I know people are busy and it's hard to always catch them right when you're live. So um, with that said, thank you, Caitlin, and we'll see you guys all next Tuesday. So we'll talk to you later. Bye.